Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you who don't already know me, my name is Daniel Pino, and um, I've been a long, long time uh, Microsoft Access MVP. Today in this video, I thought we'd explore uh, something I haven't seen very often uh, online, or should I say, I don't think I've ever seen it online in the context of uh, Office automation, you know, whether it be Access Excel or some other program with VBA. And that is performing OCR. Um, so what is OCR? If you're not already familiar with it, it is optical character recognition. Um, in layman's terms, it's processing an image and extracting from the image the text. So you could scan documents and then want to extract their actual text. Well, this is what OCR is for. So I thought I'd turn towards my favorite programming language programming tool, and that is Microsoft Access, and see if I couldn't do something nifty to do OCR. And as it turns out, it truly was not very complex at all, at least not for what I've set up today. Um, so let's just dive in to uh, doing OCR. Now, what I'm going to discuss here and show you here could easily be transferred to any other program you want. So you, you know, I'm using an access form, but you could easily do very similar in, let's say, an Excel or Word and Outlook um, user form. Uh, the concepts, the code, all of that is completely transferable. There is nothing access specific. And that's the beauty here. Let me just demonstrate it. And then we'll look at how it all works. And you'll see it is remarkably simple. So here, what I have is on the left side, this is all of the parameters for the OCR. So we're, which image do we process? Here are some settings. This will be a preview of the image when I select it. And here, when we perform the OCR, the output, the actual text that it manages to pull from the image will come and be displayed here. So let's go pick an image. Uh, let's start with this guy here. As you can see, we get a preview of what that image is, just sometimes to make sure we know what we're doing. And you can even double click. Uh, and once you get past the security warning for no reason, um, you'll see the actual image here, should you ever want to inspect it closer. And it will open up in whatever your default image software is. Uh, here we have what they refer to um, as page segmentation mode. Now, yeah, page segmentation mode, it's just trying to help the OCR program know what type of document it's dealing with, how the text might be arranged. So by default, I will leave it on the default setting of three, which is fully automatic page segmentation. And then here, if we know, if we're able to help, we would even specify the language of the text or the content. And then I press run OCR. We wait a couple of seconds, perhaps longer. It depends on the image, depends on the quantity of text, depends on all sorts of things. And here we get the result. And like I said, if we open it up and put them side, oops, side by side for two seconds, you'll see, or just looking at the image above, that it's quite accurate. And this is text. Okay? I can come in here and edit. I can copy it now and go put in Word and an email and do all sorts of things. So how have I done this? Well, Access doesn't have OCR. So I had to find another program that I could automate. And there are a whole slew of them on the market. And I'm just showing you a general concept. But you can apply the same concept to a multitude of other tools. Um, you'll also see today the tendency for most programs, most things, is now they're all online. There are services that offer basically a free OCR up until you can do so many images or so many pages. And after that, it's paid subscription. Um, and that, you know, we can do, and I may explore in another video at another date. But I was looking for something that I could be basically self-contained, um, run locally, the images are local, nothing has to go to other service providers. Um, the other thing, and let's just look, how, how did I do this? What program am I using? I'm using a really well-known, uh, it's been around a long time, Tesseract OCR. 
And then here's their Git page. You can go explore it if you want. Um, this is version, they're now up to 5.5.0. And it's an excellent tool. But I didn't use version 5.5.0. Okay. Why? Nothing against 5.5.0. 5.5.0 is where they are now. It's got lots of improvements. It is what normally I would advise a client to use. However, I wanted something that didn't require installation. And these later versions require installation. And I actually, through Google, managed to find that you could still locate version 302, which was the last version I could find that was still portable. So it required no installation. It's just a drop into a folder and use. So with that in mind, I'm using Tesseract, but I'm using an older version. Now, if you're able to do the installation of 5.5.0 without any headaches, that's what I'd advise you to do. So with that in mind, um, like I say, I was looking for a drop-in-place solution. I am using version 3.0.2. So let's just look at it. How am I doing this? And you're going to see this is remarkably simple. The only thing we need to keep in mind, however, the one thing that tripped me up, was that when it does its OCR, it outputs, well, because it handles a whole slew of languages that go beyond our standard ANC uh, character set and things like that. So we're getting into, you know, it could be Chinese, it could be any of these languages that use uh, really extensive character uh, sets. And because of that, originally when I was... Uh, putting it into my text box, it was giving me some gibberish. And you're going to see in two seconds how I handled that to handle these extensive character sets. And, and once you get past that hurdle, the rest of it is really, really straightforward. So let's look at the VBA. And, uh, well, here, what I was just talking about in reality, um, it's actually right here at the top of my module. You're going to see here, I'm using uh, this API, uh, the 32-bit versions here, um, in conjunction with this function, where, as you can see here, the multi-byte wide character, okay? So this is going to take my data, it's going to manage to transform it, and so I can display it properly in the text box. So it will handle all of those characters for me. And you'll see where we implement it below in the code. But really straightforward, it all comes down to one button. Um, I didn't even really focus on it, but you know, you come here, you do your settings, but everything is focused on this one button. This, this guy does it all. And as you're gonna see, the code's very simple. So what am I doing? Um, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna grab here, what's the path to the image that we actually wanna perform the OCR on. Next here, we're gonna define the path as to where the program outputs the text file with the results, because that's the way this program works. It generates a text file with the results of the OCR. Now, one thing to note in this specific case is the program expects a path with a file, but without an extension. It will automatically append when it does its thing, it will automatically append a .txt to this file name. But I also need that file name so then I can work with it. So therefore, I also created my own variable with that previous path appending the TXT because I need it. And then we create another variable here, which is where's the location of the actual EXE file that we're going to run that does the OCR for us. So I have these variables defined. I'm gonna come and check that this output file doesn't already exist, because if it does, I'm just gonna delete it. So we're starting with a clean slate. Then I come here and I define my actual command. My, my command is very simple. We're gonna go get that exe. We're gonna then pass it the image file. Then we're gonna pass it where to output the results. And then we put our first parameter, the PSM, and it's the value from our list box on the form. Then the dash L, the language, and the language that was selected in our list box. And then I simply shell out that command to a hidden window, and it does its thing. There's different ways of going about this. What I chose to do is I created a looping mechanism here with a small delay in which it's going to check if that output file that we've defined here and that 
Tesseract will automatically create if it has been created. So basically, nope, the file doesn't exist. Nope, the file doesn't exist. Nope, the file doesn't exist. Oh, the file exists. I can keep moving on. It will do this basically 100 times, 100 loops. And then it will pop up to the user a question saying, mm, not sure, something may be wrong here. Um, should we exit? And the choice is yours. For a large image, I, you know, you're going to say, no, no, keep going. But for a small image, if it's still looping and looping and looping, well, then you're going to say, yeah, maybe we should kick out of this. Some, something's wrong. Uh, and you can, it's going to do this for every 100 loops. So you can say no, keep going, and uh, you'll get another pop-up in a little while, and you can choose at that point. But this is my way. It's just a small looping mechanism waiting for Tesseract to do its thing and output the file. And when it does, then it continues on its way. So now the text file with the OCR results has been created, if everything's gone well. And we're simply going to read that file content. And this is where we had to use that UTF to string. So we're going to go grab the bytes from that text file. We're going to read them in here, convert them to a string for us to then be able to use. The other important thing, uh, I added this replace to convert the VBLFs to VBCRLFs, so then they present properly in the uh, text box. So then we get those line returns proper. So we're getting our result here, doing a simple little replace. And then I come down here and I output that result. If there's no content, then the OCR, there was no content, but instead of just leaving it blank, I'm purposefully putting out a message to the user so they know it ran, but there's just no content. We weren't able to OCR the text for whatever reason. And that's basically it. It's that simple. Everything hinges on this command line. So we create our command, we execute our command, and then the rest is just waiting for the text file to be created and reading it back into our text box. That's it. That's why I'm saying it. It's really, really simple. So, and then you can uh, do OCRing to your heart's content. Uh, run OCR, and like I say, some files take longer than others. Uh, you also see uh, here, do do. We're going to get there. No, you see, there's that pop up I was talking about. So the process may be stalled. Would you like to cancel the process? Yes. We're going we're gonna to exit out of it. And let's switch now to English. We're in the default mode. Let's try this again. And there you go. So just to demonstrate how some of this works. And like I said, this is text. You can edit. You can cut. You can do whatever you want to it. But that's how easy and complex this is. Now, the one thing about the languages, however, when I downloaded the portable version, it only came with the English language installed. And no, I have not installed all these languages. I've just installed the French and the German so far uh, while I was doing some testing. I'll just point out, if you come here in the references, I have here, download other language. Okay, this is for version 5, so we're not worried. But for older version, I have this link here on their GitHub where you can go get all the other languages. So if we were to come here, for instance, as you can see here, you have all the different languages you can download to your heart's content. So like I said, I came here, I found the French here, the FRA uh, here. So I downloaded these guys here and I put them in the same folder as the other languages. Um, and there's no installation that you just have to copy them into the right folder. And after that, it works. The other thing I'll mention, if you look at my code, uh, I generate my command, and I've been doing a debug uh, print. Now, obviously, this isn't required when it's in production. But it's a great way to grab the command. And we can open a command prompt, right? And you can put that command in there, run it, and you're able to see if there are any errors sometimes. So 
that too is another great approach for testing this out. Uh, because sometimes you don't just get this, you'll get cannot read or, you know, all sorts of errors, exceptions that can happen. Um, that's what I did during development. Now I've got it ironed out. I know this is going to work reliably. Uh, but um, do I still have that? Yeah. If we change that, let's try with that Chinese command before that I had tried. Right? You'll see here, now I'm getting an error. Why? Because the language file isn't actually there. And it's telling me that. It can't find this trained data. Now, if I come back here, I could probably find it there. So the Chinese training data. So if I download this, put it in my folder, now the error will go away. So you can download all of the languages if you want, and then you don't even have to worry about that aspect of it anymore. Or if you know you're just working in English, well, then you just keep that. Uh, the language files do add up the, you know, like, I'm not sure, 300 megabytes, maybe even more once they're uncompressed. And that's part of the reason for keeping the, you know, the folder size down. If I know I'm just working in my environment in English and French, I'm just going to keep those two libraries. But as you can see, you have a lot, lot more uh, options available to you if that's the language you need to do OCR on. But that really is the complexity of the entire matter. So I'm going to stop there. As you can see, performing OCR in any program, including Access, is really, really simple. Now, the results that uh, are questionable. Some images can be OCR much easier than others. Um, some languages are a lot easier to OCR than others. And a lot of it requires testing. And you can actually do training with the uh, software. There's ways that you can uh, train it. You can even specify what characters are allowed and not. There, there are other options, um, but uh, for the bulk of my needs, this works well. Like I said, if you don't mind doing an installation, I'd still highly recommend going and installing the version 5.5.0, or whatever the latest version is at that point in time. Send your, you know, benefiting from all the improvements over the years. And there is, substantial changes that have occurred over the years from you know version 302 that i'm presenting here so from that perspective alone if you're able to do an installation do the 550 um and yeah that's where we are happy ocring guys i hope this is somewhat helpful and uh, informative some of you out there and i guess we'll see you in the next video take care everyone